my name is Johnny Smith, this is Car Pervert, and this car is an electric VW Up, also known as the E Up. No Yorkshire jokes. Just no more. They've been done already. About seven years ago. So there's your E Up, your new gen E Up, and there's your outgoing E Golf right there. The E-Up is available as a five-door only, so although you can order a normal up as a three-door, like the Up GTI, you can't buy the electric one in any other form, body, body shape as this. As soon as you get in and up, it's definitely a simpler beast. It's more Spartan, but that doesn't mean it's lacking in charm. It just feels a little bit less luxury. I actually don't mind it though. I love the kind of utilitarian quality of an up. This bit of up is so old fashioned, it's almost like a VW Lupo. I had a Lupo, I love the Lupo. If you remember the Lupo, it was a great little short wheelbase, funky thing. And then it got replaced by the VW Fox, which was dog shit. And then they got rid of the Fox and then they brought this out. But I've not been in an electric up for so long and uh, it feels good. I'm just gonna put my other glasses on. Again, I don't know why these glasses are in the car. I have a little bit of a, uh, a um, an admission to make, which is those glasses used to be mine at school. How I didn't get beaten up, I really don't know. But there you go. So I've got Eco and Eco Plus down there. I've got um, normal shifter down here. I can put it into B for braking mode. Looks like I can dial up or down recuperation. So the same as the Golf, knock it to the left to up the regen, knock it to the right to back off, pull it back for brake, like I said. No USBs. There's no USBs. Wow, I've got a bit of coffee left. Huh. The USB's there, there is a USB, it's there. If I, if I take that off, it's there. You forgot, it's there, it's always been there on ups. You just forgot, it's there. It's there, it's there Johnny. It's there, it's there. It's there Johnny, look. It's there, it's on this thing. Please listen Johnny, it's there. Yeah. So it's on the little thing, it's there, it's there. Yeah, it's simple. Really low little center console. The seats are like flat, simple. With uh, not a great deal of kind of design in them, but the backrest I like. They're comfortable though. Super simple inside. Not much of a center console, things. This is all very similar if you own an up that's petrol powered or, uh, you know, the up GTI is a cool car. But what I'm fascinated about with this particular car is always thought the up made a good little EV, but in previous incarnations, it had such a small battery. Uh, and, a, and a small real world range, you're like, nah. You used to be able to get it in three door. You can still get three door other up models like the GTI, but not the electric one. I love the simple infotainment. It doesn't need to be fussy at all. It's got a heated seat. There we go, two stage. Digging that. Uh, lane departure off. And then this is trying to connect my phone. Really basic, and obviously that's where you're supposed to put your phone. So you clamp your mobile phone on and uh, adjust it, and it works. It means the infotainment system is dominated by what phone you have. Aux input there, obviously Bluetooth connectivity and stuff. So a car like this works for you if you've got a phone with a large amount of connectivity. If you don't, you might struggle. Uh, VW has an app for uh, all of the functionality of the um, of the electric side of things. It doesn't have an e-manager as such, as far as I know. Well, it doesn't have a touch screen. Hello. Oh yeah, it's still, still scroll and push with the knob. Wow, I haven't done that for a while. Analog gauges, none of this digital stuff like you get in the Golf. Uh, you've got three little clusters here. One in the middle is your speed with your uh, your trip counter and your um, your temperature. On the left is your usage of power, how much regen you're getting or how much power you're getting, you're using out of 10. And on the right is your battery status. And it's a needle 
a swinging physical needle gauge. I quite like that. Do you know, the, the upper's always driven like a bigger car in a good way. It always feels more mature to drive than it really is. I think people discount it because they think it's going to be a flimsy feeling thing. When you open and shut the door, it feels a bit more flimsy than a Golf. The rear windows are pop out only rather than wind down. It's all cost saving. Like I say, the seats are flatter without much kind of upholstery detailing. One piece headrest, so not an adjustable headrest, which I don't mind, but when you're trying to mount a camera on a headrest for the purposes of a YouTube video, damn, it's annoying. You can see I've got the uh, the kiddies Recaro seat in there. Give you a bit of um, size comparison. It is a four seater. It is not a five seater. So that might be a deal breaker for you. A lot of these smaller EVs are four seat. Um, probably because the battery pack lives under there and it's something to do with the packaging. But yeah, two ISO fixes in the back, but it's a four seat. Uh, and all you've got is a, is a single kind of shared cup holder back there. Quite a pronounced transmission tunnel. Um, and these fixed headrests, which I quite like, but then I spend most of my life in the front of a car. So I think sometimes for kids and rear passengers, it obstructs the view and might make you feel a little bit uh, travel sick. Boot space, 251 litres. Um, it's like a shallow, deep boot, if that makes sense. It's got depth, but it's not very, uh, it's not very deep that way. Uh, I can't remember the right words to use for some reason. Um, there's a trough right by the rear valance where you can put the cables, some of the cables. Of course, that's the three pin plug there, but the normal type two connector is in there. And it's pretty basic. Look, I mean, you can see the body color and everything like that. Um, tiny little parcel shelf, but actually quite a lot of space for a car of this size. The Golf is 341 liters. So this is 251, Golf is 34. And Golf is a significantly bigger boot. Uh, it's a bigger car, bigger footprint but this is still very useful. Quite a wide entry point as well into the back of the car. It really maximizes a short wheelbase. If you look at how little there is on the overhang there, that's what the up's really good. That's why it handles well and it feels like a big car. Really long wheelbase for the overall length. So it's an 82 PS equivalent electric motor, a smaller motor than the Golf. Um, which means zero to 60 is slower, like 11.9, I think it is to 62, which is pretty slow. Though, it feels nippy again, zero to 30. Great chassis, it really is. It's a good car. And this comes in with the government grant, 19,600 or just over. So it's more expensive than the Skoda Citigo and the Seat Me, which are all the same car. I thought this had the exact same battery pack, but it's got less cells um, than the one from the Golf. This is 32.3 kilowatt hour. The Golf was 35.8 kilowatt hour. Um, so as a consequence, the battery pack weighs about 245 kilos. The battery pack in the Golf is about 345. So it's probably a more dense, newer cell, the same cell as the Golf, rebuilt in a slightly smaller pack in this car. This car weighs under 1,250 kilos, about 1,235. Just notice Lane Keep Assist has just nudged me in a bit. I don't like Lane Keep Assist. It's on a lot of cars now, um, but it's on this, the up. Similar wheels to the e-Golf, but a variation on the theme. They're called Tezel. They're called Tezel, these wheels, Tezel. They're a variation on the sort of flat aero design, um, but 15 inch, yeah, 165, 65. But again, these things are geared towards efficiency um, and, you know, range rather than out and out grip. Although I do love the way that the up drives. At the front, similar kind of DNA from the e-Golf blue lines, uh, black, and, black and white or black and silver badge, which is new now, that wasn't on the e-Golf. And the C-shaped running lights, these C-shapes, which are e-Golf only and e-up. 
The E-Up doesn't come with LED headlights. It's got halogen uh, headlights and conventional bulbs. It does have LEDs at the back and they, I've noticed that's a lowercase e, although I don't think it's supposed to be because it's on the piston cars as well. Just noticed that. Um, and tints at the back, tinted rear windows, which I don't particularly like because they don't really match with the front and tinted rear glass. I do love the tailgate of the E-Up just because it's all all glass is a good style. They look good in white with the black contrasting bits. And that's kind of it really. Um, number plate doesn't say Zod. That's not a reflection on what the car's like. It's just a registration. It was just luck that mine was called Zod. Rise before Zod. Oh, let's pop the bonnet. I do know that E-Ups, all ups are made in Bratislava in Slovakia. Whereas I'm pretty sure that E-Golfs made in Germany. Oh, look, look. The inverter on the top, it's a much, much shorter bonnet and uh, drivetrain. And I'm pretty sure Volkswagen have told me there's no heat pump option on the E-Up. Um, so like my E-Golf that doesn't have the optional heat pump, you're best off using the heated seats or heating the car up, preheating the car up when you plug it in to charge. Talking of which, there's the charging point. Yeah. And for the first time, the E-Up has CCS capability. So where are we? Oh, stiff. God, that's actually can't get that off. Bloody shit. Seriously, I can't. Oh. Look at this. Look, a physical key you have to put in a hole. It's quite unusual nowadays. Get this off. Fucking hell. I'm gonna have to bollock porridge. This makes me hate the system even more. Stupid bungs, which don't really work. Cocks. I'm gonna go and get a really big stick and I'm gonna smash it off. This shouldn't be part of the video. Right, there's a stick. Can't get that. Am I doing something wrong here? Is there a button I'm supposed to have pressed? This is ridiculous. It's like a shit joke. Now there's a guy walking his dog coming. He's thinking I'm mad. He's over there. Can you see him? It's going to be awkward. Right, it's poking the shit out of it. I can't believe that I'm actually doing this. Shit. Well, would you look at that? I just opened the door after a drive and these fell off. I don't know what the jam was. Anyway. The glow means go to charge. If you use the DC um, CCS function, which the original 2013 up um, didn't have, zero to 80% an hour. This is quiet though, 60 miles an hour, fairly windy day, it's quiet. You've got a door pockets that can just fit my big fat water bottle. But if you think about this, 159 mile range or thereabouts, 19 and a half thousand pounds to buy brand new. We are in the realms of an electric car with a very useful amount of miles being affordable, absolutely affordable. Because people don't buy cars outright anyway, so they buy them on a monthly payment scheme. So this is exciting. I am gonna enjoy the week with this, I think. I'm gonna enjoy it. The last one I drove had such a small battery pack, it, it was nothing more than a shopping car. Suddenly now we've got an up with over 150 mile range, uh, CCS, DC, quick charge ability at 40 kilowatts. I can actually drive across the country with, with ease now. I've proved I can do it with the Golf. What I also like about this, you've got the new VW logo I noticed on the front. It's the black and white VW logo. This is just black and silver and I think it's on the, on the back as well. I don't have a problem going from a Golf to an up. Some people will see it as a real backward step. You know, this might be a bit studenty or old person like, but I actually think it's it's just a fine car. I'm gonna put my bum cooker on just nice and low, keep it on a low simmer. I'm gonna drive back more of the scenic route. 
people have decided something a bit different. So you've got a, just a, a deep cubby hole here, no, nothing closed off, it's all open. One cup holder, looks like it's got an adjustable collar, yeah. Uh, no sunglasses case up here like the Golf, which I do quite like. Uh, electric mirrors, electric windows at the front. I like the up, loads of, loads of headroom, always has been very good. Great driving position, it's simple. If you don't mind simplicity, it's a very, very good car. Body colour continued from the outside, which means the door cards are very simple um, and uh, kind of utilitarian. So there you go then. If you want an electric Volkswagen for £20,000, you can either pick a nearly new e-Golf or you could pick a brand new e-Up. One of them slightly more luxurious, bigger boot, bigger car, more mature, I guess. The other one is brand new, a little bit more simple, slightly better range, which makes all the difference, I think, uh, and slower to accelerate, but no less fun. In fact, possibly more fun. Definitely better turning circle. I don't like the lane keep assist thing. It just annoys me. It feels like someone's grabbing my hand. What do I think of the, the up? I actually think when you consider this car comes in at under £20,000, brand new, with the UK government subsidy, and you could get it even cheaper if you wanted a Seat or a Skoda badge on the front, I think I would rather have this brand new than the e-Golf at two years old, let's say, um, for pretty much the same price. The Golf is great. The Golf will feel more luxurious and the Golf is a physically bigger car with a physically bigger boot and three seats in the back with not two. So if those are major considerations of yours, then uh, the Golf is probably king. However, the overall range, EV range, is better in this car. Uh, and although it's slower, it still has that nippiness to it because of its small size. And they've both got great chassis. But I would probably go for this, the new revised E-Up, uh, than the outgoing E-Golf. Thank you for watching, Car Pervert. This has been quite a sensible review. This is like real world stuff. If you want to know what's gonna come next, I urge you to subscribe. So click the subscribe button and the bell icon, and that means as soon as I've uploaded a video, you will see it. Do you own an E-Up or do you own an E-Golf? If so, I welcome your comments below.